about the blessedness of the day. Greetings of the Feast of the Quran. I would like to express some of my reflections on St. Thomas, the Apostle of Christ. Let me begin with the inversion story that Thomas was not there at the scene when Jesus, after his resurrection, appeared to the child of death. And the other apostles told Thomas, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and put my finger into the mark of the nails, I will never believe. John chapter 20 verse 24 Even though he passionately professed his faith, saying, My Lord and my God, he is still known as doubting Thomas. St. Thomas the Apostle has to his credit to have uttered the most tiny and cryptic prayer, My Lord and my God. Reciting it over and over again brings indescribable blessings and graces. The recitation of this small prayer in devotion is actually the proclamation of faith. The Zero Malabar Church essentially understood the graces abounding this, so has incorporated it at the beginning of almost all prayers in the liturgy. Many of us take our faith for granted. But for Thomas, we may still be pleading. It is our privilege and fortune to have St. Thomas, one of the apostles of Christ, to be the father of our church. The inversion story is that Thomas was there to witness the ascension of Mary into heaven. Passing of Mary is attributed to Joseph of Arimathea. The document states that only Thomas was there to witness the bodily assumption of Mary into heaven. The other apostles were miraculously transported to Jerusalem to witness her death. Thomas was left in India. But after her burial, he was transported to her tomb, where he witnessed her bodily assumption into heaven from which she dropped her girdle. In the inversion of Thomas Dallas, now the other apostles are skeptical of Thomas' story of the ascension of Mary into heaven. Until they see the empty tomb and the girdle with the Thomas. These narrations of witnesses of faith show that Thomas had the first-hand experience of the eternal mysteries. Of course, life, death, and resurrection of the Lord. Now the ascension of Mary into heaven. Once an experience is so deeply engraved in us, we talk on and on to make others know about the truth. Saint Thomas, filled with wisdom and grace, was sent to India, our mother Mary, to proclaim the good news of grace. And we are the outcome of his zealous and devoted preaching. The churches he founded are the effect of his tireless work. The people he baptized are the result of his supreme sacrifice. This evolution has to be continued all the more with the same spirit of enthusiasm and zeal because the world is in the grip of false doctrines. The faith has to be invigorated and re-evangelized. Let us pray and work to meet this end of self-sanctification and sanctification of the world. The disciples were ordinary everyday people like us. The more we know about them, the better we understand how Jesus used people like us to plant his church. Because of Thomas, his resolute desire to see and touch Jesus as the others did, left no room of doubt or argument 
that Jesus is alive and active in his resurrected human body all through the ages. As a mother enjoys the presence of her child, so also Jesus loves the earning of the heart of his people for his graceful presence, as he has responded to Saint Thomas. He would respond to our daughter desire. In the Gospel of Saint John, we get the verses of Saint Thomas. Thomas first speaks in Saint John chapter eleven, verse six, where Lazarus has recently died. And the other apostles do not wish to go back to Judea. Thomas says, Let us also go and die with him. Thomas speaks again in chapter 14, verse 5. Jesus has just explained to them that he is going away to prepare a house for his followers, and that one day they would join him there. Thomas reacted, saying, Lord, we do not know where we are going. How can we know the way? Words express one's personality. There was always this curiosity and sincerity in St. Thomas. He was true to his emotions and open to the teachings of Jesus. So he clarified and affirmed whenever necessary. This unique, strong character of St. Thomas made him docile to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Thus, we have a father, the dearest disciple of Jesus, to intercede for us in heaven in our journey of faith. According to the traditional accounts of St. Thomas Christians of India, St. Thomas landed in Musaris, Krankano, in AD 52 on Kerala coast and was martyred in AD 72 in Manila. He is believed by St. Thomas Christians to have established seven churches and baptized several people. According to the Syrian Christian tradition, St. Thomas was allegedly martyred at Mylapur at St. Thomas Mount on 3rd July in AD 72 and his body was interred in Mylapur. Marev Frame, the Syrian, states that St. Thomas was killed in India and his relics were taken to Edisa. This is the earlier record of his death. The accounts of Barbosa witness that. The tomb was then maintained by a Muslim who kept a lamp burning there every day. The Indian Force and Telegraph Department issued a special postal stamp in commemoration of St. Thomas, the Apostle of Christ, on 3rd December 1964, which coincides with the arrival of His Holiness, Pope Paul VI in India. Believing is to see. Faith, as the Bible describes it, is not blind. Unbelief is blind. Faith sees beyond what eyes can see. A reality that God reveals to us, which is more important, in fact more real than what we can see with our physical eyes. Reference Hebrews 11. 1. The living God Jesus is a reality. Whom can be experienced by those who have their inner eyes opened. As we celebrate and commemorate the martyrdom of St. Thomas, the Apostle of India, let's do develop this art of sagacity to experience the supreme being in and around us all throughout our life, in all walks of our life. 
May the merciful love of God and guide us and lead us forward. Thank you.